five seconds ago. Oh, hello, Omar. Thanks for being here. Let me get this bad boy up and running. Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Or Thursday for some maybe. There we go. Hi Dora, hi Celine. Macaron maker, hello. Macaron maker, um, didn't you have a wedding or something that you were doing soon? With, like, on top of when you were in school and lots of things? Hi, Lorraine. 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 Sorry. Um, made white one today. Bonjour. First time watching live, Sahiba. Thank you for being here. Hi from Trista. Hello, Trista. Hi, Allison. Eleanor, hello, guys. Thanks for being here. We are going to test out this convection oven I got. So it's like a little toaster oven slash convection oven. Hi from Paris. Hello. And um, I tried it once. Let me get the shells. I did something, I used them for a collab. Um, I was making a hundred for, oh, for a vacation. And you traveled with them to Florida? So I cut one open and I saved it. So it was like using extra batter. So I had two different colors left. Either way, um, they were so full when I tried them in this oven. There's another one. Like no, no room for a gap whatsoever. The fullest shells I've ever had. I don't know if that will work again today. Um, it might've been a fluke. Or this convection oven is just a super good conductor of heat and is wonderful for macarons. So we'll see, that's why I wanna try again. Hello from Egypt. Um, we're gonna try again today and I'm gonna do a full tray. So I have this crumb coat, uh, like a, a crumb tray that fits into this convection oven and I'll show you guys the, uh, the toaster convection oven closer up, but this is what goes on the bottom so none of your toast crumbs or bread crumbs fall down to the ground, um, the bottom and like burn on the bottom. So instead I saw um, Shelly from Bella Bakes using this tray inside when she makes her macarons. Cause have you guys seen all the time lapses from Shelly at Bella Bakes and then Josie and Jody, um, Jody, I mean, and then Chelsea, is it Chelsea Sweets? Um, like the biggest, like she, I think she has like a million followers, but I always forget handle name or like how to pronounce handle names. But um, they all, I think, have this maybe one. At least Shelly does. If you guys want to check out her highlights, she has an Amazon link to this Oster. Oster, guys, you know me and pronouncing things, but um, to this convection bake. I also have it on my Amazon. Um, macaron favorite things as well now um, because it was fantastic but it does not fit a full half sheet tray so that's why I'm using this or you can use quarter sheet trays with a quarter sheet mat this one is one that comes with like the Costco brand you could use one of these like this um, or what else works are these um, Teflon sheets, so those fit nicely too. I have it crooked, but it fits on here. What you don't want is it overlapping on these, so then when you put it in, it like messes it up because it's really nice and snug when you put it in the oven. So one of my favorite mats like this, this is too big. So 
So if you put this on, you can see it will overhang on both sides a bit. Okay, so this is smaller than a half sheet tray. Um, I had a whole bunch of people messaging me on Instagram being like, oh my gosh, I need to get it. But if you're doing production, large production, this may not be the best bet for you uh, because it would take a long time to bake up all of your macarons. But I had the same batter baked up in this little toaster oven and then my gas oven. And there was definitely a gap in my gas oven and then there was no gap in my convection. So it really goes to show that if you are struggling with a small gap in your macarons, it could definitely not be your fault, right? It just like release that energy and the stress of getting full shells. It could be your oven and it's not that big of a deal. Like they'll still, they're still gonna taste great. They'll be mostly, hopefully they're mostly full. Um, I'm just talking about that small gap. So, um, you know, you don't have to go purchase this. Like I sold all my Macs that came out of a regular oven. So I just wanna say like, you don't need full shells to have a product worth selling. That's just my take, okay? Cause I don't want, my biggest fear of showing you this is thinking someone's gonna be like, my Macs aren't good enough and that's not true. Okay, that's all I want to say. Um, I'm still sticking to a little gap is great. Okay, let's see here. Hello, we've got someone from NYC, powder of chai. Is it chai? Chi? Chi. Carrie, I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I feel like it's not working correctly. Where did you get it? Um, yeah, so it is Dora, it's from Amazon. Let me show you guys the oven. So it's got these little French doors and then there's a bake um, setting and then there's a turbo convection, that's what I baked on. There's toast, broil, pizza, defrost. So it's like a glorified, there's a dehydrator as well. Haven't used that yet, but um, that's that. So I will show you guys, let's get into it. I don't think you can, Heidi, but I will, I'm gonna first, the first tray I ever tried had like eight shells in it, on it. So I'm gonna try a full, like I'm gonna pack this baby up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. So 35 shells. I'm gonna try to bake these all at once um, and see if that works first. Cause it did seem to still have hot spots my back, my back shells uh, got toasty. So we'll see how it works. I am nervous. It's gonna lose a lot of pigment in, while toasting when I, on those back, um, the back tray. I did not turn this during bake. So I just put it in and let it go. I have a Ninja Air Fryer. Ooh, that would be fun to try. Okay, let me put these back. and then we can get started. Okay, so do you think you can cut? Yes, you could definitely cut, Allison. Cut a silicone mat to fit it, for sure. I see, that's what Shelly does. If you look at her highlights, it's like there's the first one I think is baking stuff, and she shows just a whole bunch of time lapses baking. And um, I've noticed that she cuts her silk pads. I know, Sasha, if, if the oven is such a huge deal. I feel like we all are kicking ourselves for not getting full shelves, when in fact, just the home oven is not as good as a commercial kitchen oven. And you have to give yourself a little grace with our bakes, because not everyone's gonna be able to go out and buy a new oven, right? So, um, I mean, should we stop striving for perfection? I don't know if I wanna say that, but I feel like if it's killing you, yeah. I don't know. <sighs> I want people to strive for the best, but I also don't want you to kill yourself doing it or like get down on yourself. Not, I shouldn't say kill yourself. 
Okay, we're gonna be doing, oh, should we do turquoise waters? Is that what it's called, the sugar art? Turquoise waters or orange? Should we do blue or orange? We're going um, with this sprinkle melody um, from Fancy Sprinkles. It's called Popsicle. My son, okay, I saw orange first. Heidi's first. Dora not happy about the um are you not happy Dora about the orange <laughs> okay so we're doing master elite sugar art um orange can I think of colors right now and then we're gonna pair it with these fancy sprinkles popsicle blend okay if you guys are into sprinkles, you can use Bake to Jour. I'm newly an ambassador for them. So Bake to Jour 15 will get you 15% off site wide there. And then of course, um, if you've watched my videos, you know that I, you can use Bake to Jour without the 15 and that will get you 15% off your sugar art products. All right, let's do it. I want you guys to know though, in some of these blends, there's like these huge chocolate chunks and stuff like that, which are awesome for adorning your macarons after baking. Don't bake with those. So I usually, if I'm using a blend like this, will pour it out as I get it everywhere. I'll pour it out first, and then I'll kind of make sure I don't, hand, I just get the jimmies for topping my macarons. So let's do it. I'm not gonna preheat right now. Um, I'm going to pre. I'm gonna have to dry these macarons. So I'm gonna have to let them rest. Um, but we are, we are at forty-five percent humidity, so it shouldn't take too long. And then I can answer some more questions too during that time. So we'll we'll rest for today since this isn't an insulated air bag tray. And um, then I'll start to preheat the oven. I love Master Elites too. I feel like depending on what I'm making, Master Elites, even when I'm separating my batter and doing multiple colors, I love them. Or Chef Rubber colors, I love them too. They're just a little harder to for shipping. I feel like Chef Rubber shipping is pretty expensive. Um, whereas the Sugar Art isn't as expensive for the shipping purposes. And then I, I still love like Americolor and Chef Master if you guys don't like powder colors. <laughs> All right, why can't you do no rest? So someone asked why I can't do the no rest method. It's because I'm nervous. I haven't tried it yet. And I feel like this oven is super hot. But I wanna actually move this over to see what it is reading during the bake. I've only used this one time, so this is all new to me. So hopefully that will bake up okay with that. All right, so I, I'm gonna pipe on this. This is the crumb tray. Again, a half sheet tray doesn't fit, but I love that these blueprint mats um, fit perfectly on this tray. So I can't do no rest because it's not an insulated tray and it could crack all my macarons. So I'm gonna do my best just to be safe and do everything that I know yields a good, um, traditionally a good macaron. Good, I'm kind of like questioning good. I got a sprinkle in my, my dries. Okay guys, I'm gonna start. Let me move you down. Um, Ooh. Oh, my goodness. In Puerto Rico, Steffi is a, a, yeah, I don't know what it is outside, but in here I've got my air blasting and I've got my dehumidifier running since the morning. So let's do this. I'm doing a small batch 
50 grams. I'm doing a half batch of what's on my Macaron 101 video. So 50 grams of egg whites, 45 grams of granulated sugar, about two grams of egg white powder, and then for my dry confectioner sugar and almond flour are 65 each. All right, let's go. Mona Lisa, I just read your post. Nice and foamy. I'm gonna put my dry uh, my sugar in. I give a thumbs up to Mona Lisa's comment about gas. whipping up so fast with the little amount. Okay, so I'm at a point where I'm almost a little further than I usually do it, um, but my sugar is dissolved, so I'm gonna add my color. And this is the orange. We're using Heidi's favorite color. I love that. I feel like that's not a typical favorite color, so. We're gonna do a tiny bit of orange. That was more than I wanted. All right, let's keep mixing. Look how beautiful that is. Zoe, that's a good idea. We'll do that. Another live. Let's try it out. I'm gonna go up to speed two. This only has three speeds.
is good. We've got those stiff peaks. You can see the striations are holding in the bowl. That's when I like to stop. And I feel like you could think that it's better to stop earlier because um, you can see striations for a while. But how I tell is just it looks a little less wet when you keep going a little bit more. This is, I haven't done this small of a batch for a really long time. We'll see. All right. And um, I liked, who was it that said, oh, Macaron Maker 07. It's like the, the orange is hiding because I don't want it. I want the blue. Sorry, guys, I didn't, I didn't do both. I saw that later, Steffi. Okay, so small batch. You can probably just put all the dries in at once, but we'll do multiple batches here. Just kind of incorporate it in slowly. Feel like a broken record with how many times on my videos I've said the same thing, but um, just kind of patting it in and not trying to deflate right now. So again, this was only 50 grams of egg whites. We'll see how much this yields. I haven't made this for a really long time. So once you have all the dries incorporated, so I'm still kind of just tumbling the dries in and then you can kind of cut through the middle, make sure there's dries throughout the middle as well. Once you feel like it's evenly incorporated, that's when I'll start the actual deflating, the macronage process. So push up against the side of your bowl and around itself. And then you can kind of do little quarter turns with your bowl so you get all the way around and your batter is evenly deflated. And every once in a while, get at the bottom of the bowl and kind of bring the bottom to the top. And then when you feel like it's getting smoother, you can always just, just check it and see where you're at. This is still too thick, right? You want it flowing consistently. So I'm just gonna keep going. Such a pretty color. Almost there. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. And depending on how much batter you get on your spatula, it will flow differently. So even if your batter's ready, it might not flow off your spatula if you only get like this much, right? So just know like if you really wanna check consistency, I like to get a huge spoonful of my batter to see how it falls off. Spatula full, if we're gonna be correct about this. Sorry, I hate having the batter on my bowl rim. All right, looks like we're about there. Let's see here. I have to do it this way. Okay, there we go. Let's see if I can show you guys right-handed problems. You see how it's flowing off? I don't want it to get too much thin, more thin, thinner outer. I can't even talk. I don't want to thin the batter out any more than that. I'm trying to get you guys a good flow there. See? That's about where I'd like it. Put it in our piping bag with a, I have a nine millimeter tip, which is I think equivalent to um, a Wilton 12. Just 
Makes me want a creamsicle, orange creamsicle right now. Okay, dry hands when you're playing with your stuff. I'm just gonna keep, sorry that you can't see my face, but I feel like this is better to be able to see down here. I am going to pipe on our little tray. And at this point, I'm gonna turn on my convection oven to 300 and let it preheat. And I'm gonna fill them all up. I might regret this, but I wanna know like how much you can really produce because the first time I tried it, actually maybe I, I don't even have enough batter. I don't know how much this will yield, but the first time I did it, I only had six or seven shells in there, right? So I'll do every other for now, see how much batter I have. It might, I might get completely cracked shells. I don't know, with, with more, shells in any oven, the more moisture is released when you're baking. So you could get different results. So we'll see. If anything, I should have saved this last row till the end to see if I had enough batter because that's where it got the hottest last time. My bad. Sprinkle. I'm so mad at myself for doing that back row. I thought this would be enough batter for a full tray. Put our sprinkles on. Baby. Let's see if I can get one more baby <gasps> as I do that. Oh no. Let's see if I can repipe that. Okay, so when you do something like that, if you like make a mess and you have to pick it up, just know it's gonna be worked more. You're gonna have, um, have worked that in your piping bag a lot more, so it's gonna be probably over mixed. But it's worth a shot. Okay, so we're gonna put our sprinkles in here. Again, these are uh, fancy sprinkles. I'm super excited to get sprinkles, guys. They make life happy. There are in that same, in the same, um, I'm just going slow because I don't want to accidentally get one of the big guys. There are some cute little, there's one that's called ice cream. 
and they have little ice creams in them. And then the banana split one, if, I don't know if all you guys have Instagram, but I just did a like banana bread and we put sprinkles on top because my kids love sprinkles. <laughs> so um, we put the sprinkles on top for, and the blend was called banana split and it had like little cherries and bananas in it. It's too cute. Okay, hopefully sprinkles do okay. I haven't tried sprinkles in the oven. Boom. So we're gonna let these dry. They're pretty, they look really pretty. And then we can talk. Let's get away from that heat. I'm gonna turn my fan on. And Let me get to you guys' questions now. Um, I was shocked when I received the piping tip from your storefront. It was, oh yeah, my piping tips are really big. I'll show you guys the difference between um, mine and like the small ones that come in like a Wilton pack. So these are my piping tips. They are pretty tall, right? Let me get the, the Wilton package. So this is like a little decorating kit. And look at the size difference between these two. So these are good to put in like a coupler, um, I feel like, or else they slide through the piping bags that already have a hole, like the um, canvas bags or whatever. These are way too small. Um, I've always used these, but these are good if you use reusable bags, I feel like, or with a coupler. All right, so let me get, let me read up. Let's see, did I miss you adding the egg white powder? Um, my cowboy's wife, so that I added my egg white powder in with my confectioner, I mean, sorry, my granulated sugar. I apologize, I didn't specify that. So I mix in my egg white powder beforehand in the granulated sugar just so it's evenly dispersed or else it clumps up in your liquid egg whites and it can stay there even without, with throughout the whipping process, you'll still get clumps of egg whites. So dispersing it within your sugar kind of guards it from clumping. Um, okay. Yes, I added the food coloring early. When I add the food coloring early with, with a powdered color, it allows it to really uh, hydrate and activate in the liquid of your egg whites. When you add some powdered colors, especially like a violet color, it's really hard to fully mix in uh, towards the end. So my internal thermometer, I set this at 300 here and it is reading 300, so it's pretty accurate. That's in the middle of the oven. So let me check. They're almost dry. We'll let them dry a little bit longer. And let me get to your questions. Okay. It's 84 degrees. Sugar, it's awesome. Uh, late to the party. Hi, Alicia. 240 macarons. Oh, man. Even with a dehumidifier. Steffi, I bet with that type of humidity in the PR, was it Puerto Rico, right? Um, I bet it can be a super challenge and it's hard, I bet, to switch and go into your bedroom. Is that what you said? You have to go into your bedroom and make the macarons and then cook in the oven. I had someone else do a class with me and she had to do that as well. She would prepare her stuff uh, in a different room and then walk the stuff over to the kitchen when it was time to bake. Um, 
Love this shirt. Yay, Alicia. I know, I gotta wear it. I mean, I'll keep wearing it after June, but during Pride Month, I'm just gonna wear it as much as possible. Uh, let's see here. This is from John Ryan's Max Macarons. I don't, the handle, John Ryan Max or Macarons. Alicia, do you know? Uh, let's see here. The egg white powder was mixed in. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Sakina, for mentioning that. Boop, boop. Sorry, guys. I'm, like, catching up on the feed, and you guys have already answered each other because you're awesome. Okay. Uh, Gracie asked if I have done a small... Thank you, Alicia. That's the handle. Um, if you like these shirts, he sells them, and a portion of it is going to charity for the One Pulse Foundation. So someone asked, uh, Gracie asked if I've tried making a small batch of macarons with my stand mixer and I don't recommend it. Um, if you've bought my ebook, I have a lot of information in there regarding just the size of the batch matters. And if your whisk can't fully get, um, if your batch is too small, your whisk can't fully develop your meringue and get it stiff enough. So it's really important to do for smaller batches, a hand mixer or make a bigger batch and use your KitchenAid. Um, oh, that's awesome. Macaron maker, did you get it off of Amazon or where'd you, where did you find your shirt? I added the food coloring um, with Rona Pop. I added the orange food coloring right after the sugar and egg white powder dissolved and it's still pretty liquidy in my macarons, my, my meringue, there we go. I'm really behind, I feel like I already answered that question. Hien, hi, did you calibrate the oven? Did you have to, I didn't, I, I didn't do anything to it. Um, I'm just trying to think, how do you calibrate the oven? Like, can you switch stuff around? Or is it just like putting your um, boiling water in and seeing, like I know how I calibrate my thermometer. Is that how you do it for an oven? You still ha are getting the 26 shells though. Yeah, okay, so sorry, I'm like reading out loud. I'm failing right now. Car um, Carrie said, can you over dry macarons? I just never knew it was, okay to pipe them all at once so um, you can totally over dry macarons yes the answer is yes to that um, really depends on your environment and how your oven works but when I would over rest my macarons a lot of the times I would see a fragile top so my batter would start to break down and I would get um, a resulted like super like if you push down it would just plop through your macaron. Sound effects were spot on. Um, <laughs> or I've heard a lot of people get lopsided macarons when they over rest, but it really depends on how your oven works and circulates air, but there are multiple bad side effects to over resting. I will say with a, with a macaron recipe with two times confectioner sugar to the almond flour, so when you have more confectioner sugar than almond flour in your recipe, I feel like you can rest those for so long. I, I could rest them for two hours and not have an issue. Okay, let's check these. They're still pretty shiny. I'm gonna go a little bit longer, guys, because it's still, um, Stick, I'm, I'm still bringing it up a little bit on my finger. It's super hot in here. So someone asked me if this thing pr puts off heat. Let me put the toaster oven into the picture. It does, it does. I thought it was gonna be a huge saver of our lives when I have to heat up my, I thought I wouldn't have to heat up the whole house when I was making um, macarons during the summer months, but it is a pretty big heat putter outer. It's hot on the top. 
You definitely don't want anything near it, so you need enough space on your countertops. These ones are, my, my knives seem to be okay. Okay, please fill them with an orange filling. Okay, so I will. I feel like creams, orange creamsicle was one of my favorites when I would do that. Let's see. Doesn't this, um, Cakes and Vintage Bakes by Kimmy, doesn't the oven look fancy? It's like, it wasn't that expensive, relatively. Like if you look for an actual convection oven that fits half sheet trays and would be a little bit more efficient, they go, they're from like $450 to thousands of dollars. So this is only 140 something when I bought it. I think it went up on Amazon to like 150 but it was on sale from 240 or something. Either way, it's a fairly good deal. Um, I can't like spend that all the time, but we didn't, we're using it a lot. So that's my justification. Okay, um, let's see here. Hello from Chicago. Hi from Maine. How's it going? Oh, thanks for being here, David. Okay, let's see here, just type Okay, yes, I have to do everything in my room. Steffi, uh, all right. Is there a perfect height for feet? Princess, uh, is there a perfect height for feet? I mean, I feel like if you have like a six inch heel, no, I'm just joking, um, that was a really bad joke. Uh, perfect height, I couldn't say yes to that because I feel like some people really like a tall foot and others like a small foot. So it's personal preference, um, really. So I like a medium sized foot. <laughs> so uh, like, I'll show you what I like. I'll get my macarons back out in a second. Six inch heels here. Yeah, Alicia, you're already tall, girl. You rock that, I love it. I love, I'm so obsessed with making macarons. Yes, I'm so happy. So am I. Like, I don't want to do anything else but just bake macarons and croissant and eat. Like, I just wish I could spend 24-7 in the kitchen. Okay. Oh, yeah, of course. Macaron Maker 07. Can I make macarons in a gas oven? Nora, is that, or is it Nora? I think I said the same thing. Yes, I have a gas oven conventional oven, no fan, and it works. I feel like you can, I saw Barb, if you guys watch, if you guys follow Sweet Mac Shop, Barb is amazing, and she did it in a Traeger, a barbecue, the other day. So you can really make anything work, um, macarons, you just need to figure it out, which the troubleshooting sometimes is painful, and it, it causes a lot of people to be discouraged and quit making macarons. But once you get there, like I would encourage you not to quit because once you get there, then you have it down and you just kind of have to, you'll learn a lot throughout your trials. How many egg white powder should you use? If you're making a small batch, like 35% um, of the full batch, just use like one, one gram. I feel like one to two grams, even maybe two is too much. One gram if you're doing a 35% batch. Uh, I don't worry too much about how much egg white powder. I just like to estimate around three to four percent. And then if it's a really small batch, just like, eh, one gram's fine. I have learned so much. From, oh, Julie. Julie, thank you so much. I'm so happy that the content has helped. Dora, thank you very much. Work is the creamsicle or no, it's not. But Dora, the if you do, I'll tell you right now, the orange creamsicle filling of mine is I use, I was using during uh, my farmer's market local cara cara oranges and just squeezing it into brave tarts marshmallow buttercream it was so good so then you've got the creamy aspect from the marshmallow buttercream and then the orange flavor some zest to top it off if you don't mind the texture of zest and uh, it's really good so you could do that but hey 
Hey gamer, you don't know why you're here. Did YouTube direct you here? They like to keep you in 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 YouTube. I don't know what I'm saying. On the on the platform. There we go. That's the word. Okay. Dora, thank you very much. Um, we can chat too after this if you want to know. I probably have it written down what exactly the increments of juice I put into it. Um, hello from Brazil. From Monte Carlos. Hello, T Tomas. I am the same way. Uh, I know cleaning up is the worst. So let's see here. I'm behind. I am so sorry that I missed the entire program. No worries, Tams. What's your favorite filling for macarons? So it really depends on my mood, but I am a big fan of pistachio. Nutty because it's not so sweet. Um, or dark chocolate caramel, strawberry, fruity. I don't know, it's so difficult. Lavender honey is always way better than I expect it to be. And I'm like, oh, this is so refreshing and just balanced. <laughs> I'm the worst for favorites, guys. Um, but pistachio, I would say, is my favorite favorite. I have a convection toaster oven. Ooh, do you love it, Tams? Okay, I feel like whew, it's putting off so much heat. I really want these macs to bake. So let me put the, let me try. Yeah, salted caramel is, is delicious, right? The, you have to have a lot of delicious salt on there. I'm a big fan of salt. Oh, and I tried, um, Kristen's from K Rose, her Instagram handle is K Rose, and then it might have some numbers. But Kristen's caramelized white chocolate with pretzels. I will never not dip pretzels into caramelized white chocolate now. It is so good. Okay, are we ready for the action? This also baked up. So usually I bake for 22 minutes, and last time I baked, in here, well the first time I baked macarons in this toaster oven, it baked for 13 minutes and it was crispy on the back. So I'm gonna put these in. I'm gonna say they're dry. Okay, and we're gonna do a timer for, I'm gonna do 11 minutes this time and check it at that point. So here we're putting it in so you guys can see since this is all about this bad boy. Um, and I put 11 minutes. Uh, it's super easy to navigate and learn how to make it. And we'll see how it works out. Again, half sheet trays don't fit in this. I don't want people purchasing it and being like, well, this is too small for me. Um, so you could definitely do that crumb coat or quarter sheet trays. Um, we've baked, we've roasted broccoli and baked lots of things in it and it's great for anything under the sun. Okay, I made your wild berry jam. Oh, Heidi, I'm so happy the jam was a good, it was a hit. That's wonderful. Um, Gabby asked how my husband's thing went. Thank you, he passed. He had oral boards for um, surgery. So he is now a, what is it, a certified, no, let's see, a board certified surgeon. So that's exciting, that was really big for him. Um, he's had eight years of residency and then he's in his second year, he's gonna start his second year of this fellowship and then um, he'll be done of training. It's been like a decade of training uh, so soon. We are counting down the days until he's done with training. Uh, let's see here. Thanks for asking, by the way. Yeah, go Wesley. I know. He has the a drive like nobody else. I'm very proud of him. Let's see. Has your ebook gone on sale? Tams, do you mean, is it on sale, like get a 15% off discount, or is it on sale, like can you purchase it? Because it is on, it's for purchasing, and um, I have a fillings ebook, so it just has a whole bunch of different 
um, fillings with um, some that are on YouTube and some that are not. Um, some have links to private videos to, to show how to make them and some are just linked to my YouTube channel to sort of organize it for you and be able to go straight to what you need. So I have a fillings ebook and then a macaron ebook and I can link them in the description of the video if you want. Um, if you've watched all my, all my videos, I feel like unless you need notes and like to read, um, you might not need any of it. But I feel like it is a really nice organizer, organizing tool um, to have everything right laid out in front of you so you don't have to search through the channel. I don't know if anyone has gotten the ebook or the fillings ebook, if you can shed any light as to if you feel like it's helped um, organize or making things just like um, convenient, I guess. Have I already said that word? Or if you found there's a lot more information in that than I've shared here, I'd love to know. Okay, let's see. The back macarons are rising so fast and then, uh oh, sorry. Um, if you guys can see, so the back ones have feet already. So that definitely means that the back is hotter and then the front are like little baby feet. So because they're so close to the door probably, this will be interesting to see how they bake up all together. Let me read the comments. I, I do specialize in French pastries and macarons have just seemed to be one of my favorite things to bake and the most um, questions I've received. So I made a lot of videos about those. Could you please see the macarons? Oh yeah, so I showed you those, perfect. Next time try two trays. Dora, don't push me. Don't push me. No, I do need to try two trays just to see. I mean, if it's a convection, maybe we could even do two trays of it. Um, let's see. I'm, I feel like a lot of people actually have this that are in the chat because someone was like, you'll love it. So if you have this same oven, let us know if you've done two trays successfully. I'll definitely try it and let you guys know though. Father's Day gift. Yes, it was a very good Father's Day gift for Wesley to pass. You're right, that's awesome. Do you think this toaster oven works well with the Swiss method? Um, Carmenza, I feel like it would work well with Swiss method as well, yeah. I feel like, um, I don't know, I feel like it, would work with all the methods because I know in, I mean, in pastry school we had, we tried, we didn't do Swiss, but we did Italian and French and they all baked up really well in the commercial convection ovens. And this is mimicking that. So I feel like it would bake with well with Swiss. The piping bag that I use, Celine, is from the Flower Girl. Um, let me get a clean one. Let me guys, let me show you again the max. They're lifting off, do you see that? Can you, they're lifting off right here. Can you see, or is that, I'm like trying to, some of them in the front are lifting off the mat, so that'll be interesting. It might be too hot for them. Oh yeah, it's 350 in there. Let me see if I can turn down the internal oven. Okay, so it says it's 350 degrees in there. Um, and they were, did you see how they were lifting up off of the, the mat? So we'll see how that works. Um, but I can start smelling the back ones. So this is the piping bag. Those are the words, the piping bag you asked about, Celine. And it is not silicone. It's something that's better for the environment, I guess. Uh, but it's really easy to clean. 
batter just like runs right off of it so it doesn't doesn't stink up like um, sometimes the canvas bags can do that um, so yeah I like it let's see here thank you so much Dora I really appreciate that he is he's pretty great <laughs> this ebook okay the ebook filling oh awesome Yvonne said um, you like the fillings ebook that's awesome I did a bunch of weddings at the end of last year okay let's see um, first time in forever. Oh, hi, Bailey. How's it going? I don't know if you had that. What is it? Heidi, what was it that we were talking about? Do you think that the toaster oven works well with the Swiss method? What brand is the piping bag? David, um, let's see. I'm baking for, I think I lost my timer when I switched the, so the back, I'm sorry guys, I'm like trying to catch up and then I'm worried about these maps. So the back smells done, They the feet have settled and I feel like they should come out but I can't take them off the tray before the others and the front is not done so this is definitely an issue of um, air circulation and then there's this little gap at the front of the, with the doors in between the doors from the French doors how many times can I say that um, so I'm wondering if that also lets air escape and then the front of your macro the front tray will not bake up as nicely so we'll see I'm trying to have a happy medium and I had set to 11 minutes, but I lost my timer when, I think it's just not showing. I think it'll still go off at 11 minutes. So if you see here, now it says 275. And then you see this little like gap right here. So I think it's not allowing that front row to bake up very nicely. So we'll see. But I'm wondering if I can get my timer to come back on. And I don't know how. So we'll see. Hmm? Um, and Heidi, what were you saying? You, what do you want linked again? Did you already answer that? How long are you baking in the toaster? I know this is... With Tia, I grew my channel. How did I grow my channel? Thank you for the answer my question. Putting out content, I guess. In the beginning, we advertised it as well for a little bit, not as too expensive. So we, how many are in there? So we, it's just through word of mouth, I guess, and sharing, people sharing it. Okay. Twenty-seven macarons in there, I think. Can you not rotate the pan? There. Let's see. So the front's not done. I'm just gonna put it back on. This is the problem. When the timer goes off on this thing, um, the whole thing shuts off. So you have to add time before the power, uh, before the timer goes off to keep it going or else it completely shuts down and you have to preheat again. Um, but I couldn't see the timer anymore because I switched the, the temperature inside, which it went back down to 200, so we'll see. So Dora, you might be able to rotate it, but I was nervous. Because there's like, let's try. I mean, it's too late now, right, to get. Mm. 
maybe I should rotate it. I don't know, I just did it the first time and they were so full, I just wanna do the same exact thing. But you're right, I could rotate. That's a good idea. <laughs> Who am I? Amateur, okay. Can I have a shout out? Caroline, or is it Carolyn? Caroline, hello. I think it's been about 10 minutes since you put them in. Yeah, so I had, a, I had, oh yeah, Heidi, I can definitely link the fillings ebook. Can you not rotate? Alicia, yeah, you can definitely rotate it and I'm just not thinking straight. I, re I re the double doors. I know the double doors make it look fancy, right? I know, you just pull one side and they both open. Okay, I'm gonna take these out just to see what, what we're dealing with. Are we ready for this? Well, now I can't grab it. Ooh, I'm getting burned. Okay, here they are. So it does run hot. So I put all of these in and it went up to 350. So that's something I'll need to adjust next Adjust next time. Adjust, adjust. Let's let it cool. And then we'll see what's going on on the inside. But yeah, you could get 35 shells in one bake. Um, if you guys, you know, wanted to try it for production. So you just open one side and they both open up. It's kind of cool, right? And it's pretty deep. So like, I can't really see, but it, it has to be kitty corner because, or else it would come off of my counter like way, way farther than I would like it to, so. I feel like you guys are crooked. Okay, let's check these babies out. <laughs> I want to dance with somebody. Is that good? I want to feel the feet with somebody. So here's the baby. I mean, surprisingly, it's not brown too much. Let's see. This has a, this has, um, this is not cool. I'm trying to get it open for you guys. But I mean, it's just a little baby, so we'll see. They have to, they have to cool more. They're still too hot. So anyone have questions? Can you do a close up? You bet I can. Let's do that. These are the main, let's see. I think going this way would be better lighting. Nope. Can you see them? What do you guys think? I feel like some of the babies get a little gap. Really interesting. I don't always pipe little babies, so I, I'll, I'll be interested in seeing if the other ones are as full. Cause I'd honestly never gotten a macaron so full as last time I used this. And I was like, well, that's annoying that the whole time it was just an oven thing, but it might've been a fluke thing as well. Let's take it off and have it cool on here. I'll move you guys down. So did you see, could you see that it was like um, frilling up at the base? So like that's what happened on this one. So I don't know if they're fully baked guys, we'll see. Um, try a different almond flour. Yeah, so Heidi, with that weird, with that weird frill, I'm very interested to know what it did to the inside of the macaron. 
what is so stuffy wrinkly tops and sticky bottoms and with raising oven temperatures oh interesting wrinkly tops with a high temperature usually I get wrinkly tops when my oven temperature is too low so if it's below 275 I get wrinkled tops or if you're putting um, cocoa powder in it you could also have too much cocoa powder or it's over mixed or too much coloring too wet of a batter um, we'll do the wrinkling of the tops or also what could cause it is uh, oil based colors so if you're using like the color mill which is awesome colorings for say mixing into your chocolate that has oil in it and that's going to ruin your meringue and thus making your batter too wet and runny and also causing wrinkled tops thank you thank you someone said they liked my shirt um yeah almond flour could be too oily as well just like Rini said and then sticky bottoms is what I got today. We don't want those sticky bottoms. Um, but it's from under baking. So you have to bake longer, even if you think they're done. Like me right now. Because like I said, I did 13 minutes the first time. And they were a little too cooked in the back. So I wanted to combat that and just drop the oven um, timing down. But now I think I might have gone too low with the 11 minutes and then the timer going off and causing the temperature to drop. So we'll see. Lorraine, thank you so much. Lorraine, Lorraine, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that and I love that little guy hugging. I appreciate that, thank you. And just keep watching them hug. Um, making some macarons this weekend for my family, yay. I like the way you explain, talk, and look. The macarons look so yummy. Oh, thank you, Cooking with Naz. Um, Carolyn, do you, you're welcome. Oh, thank you. Carolyn or Caroline? Why do I want to say Carolyn? It's probably Caroline, right? Um, was that like a YouTube? Do I push it? Does that, will that take me somewhere? The YouTube icon? Okay. Um, I got Emmy Sassy Pink after seeing yours and did Rose Max today. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see Alicia. That sounds amazing. Okay, here we go. Here's the bottom. So there's a, that's probably that ring around the rosy, no, the ring around the shell is probably from it peeling off a bit because it was too hot and it was rising too fast. If you guys see this crumb tray that we're using as a sheet tray, Carolyn, is it Carolyn? Um, it's super thin and it doesn't have a lot of insulation, right? And then this sheet, this, um, this blue drop, I think it's blue drop. This is super thin as well. It's one of my thinnest silicone mats. And so that doesn't have a ton of insulation either. So it's gonna shoot up uh, really fast. It's kind of like you're baking on parchment. So I might even try 275 next time. We'll see. But let's let's just check this out. I forget which ones were. Um, I'm trying to. No, I don't feel like. Oh, wow, yeah. No gap, you guys. Let me open up one. So this was, I think, in the back of the tray. So let me do one from the front of the tray and see if, if the front baked up. So that one, look, there's a gap. The front has a little gap, less heat. Um, so definitely the back did better. Yeah, this one isn't as good actually. There's a little gap in this one. What's going on? Now, am I gonna split open all of them? Let's do a middle. I'm curious now. Here's the middle. So, I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to like split them all open. I'm so sweaty. Can you guys see my shine? Whew, I'm so nervous but 
I mean, it's pretty good, don't you think? And then this one from the front has that gap. Carolyn, there we go. Got it. Okay, from pop on. What was that, Heidi? Pop pun gum. Let me see. Pop pun. You are amazing. Poppin? From it poppin? Make it pop. Pop, oh, like, cool, maybe? I'm like, feel so slow right now. Sorry, guys. You might need to rotate. Yes, Dora, great point. And Alicia, thanks for asking. Like, can't you just rotate it? Not sure why I didn't think of that. Trust me, like, I, I have like a little superstition issue. So the first time when it was super full, I didn't want to open the oven because I've heard a lot of people say, don't open them, even though I always, with my gas ovens, rotate. So, that is what I'm gonna try next time. I'll rotate. Thank you, Dora. Um, while cooking, Heidi's from them coming up. Poppin', from it poppin'. Let me see, Heidi. I feel like I'm, I'm missing your, I got, Caroline, Carol, Caroline, Caroline? Nice. Caroline, car, care. I'm not gonna try. How is this so difficult for me? I really dislike reading. I want to eat them. I want everyone to be able to eat them too. I wish everyone was here. Caroline, perfect. Um, so perfect. Okay. Well, now I have it. Thank you for phonetically putting it out there. Sometimes I still have an issue with phonetics, but we did it as teamwork. Thank you. No need to tap. No need to tap. Is that what we're, I did not tap these very much, huh? I'm gonna show you why. This is not sturdy, like it will bend. So when I tap it, it, it with the weight of the macarons, I feel like it kind of jiggles a little too much for comfort. So I didn't tap it really, I didn't pop the bubbles and look at the results. It didn't really matter, right? So. I feel pretty good about this. And they didn't brown very, they didn't brown on the bottom. The first time I baked, they were just a little too brown. So this was about 11 minutes, 30 seconds, probably with our weirdness of how it went off and I turned it back on and rotated it at the end. But you could definitely make this work if you're looking for something um, that is a little smaller for your production for macarons. And then we try the macaron. You have to, Animation Boy. You've got to. Hi from Japan. Hello. Good morning. All right. Uh, let's see. So what we learned from this, I'm really bad at like closing out, right? Is that the convection setting works great. You should rotate it still halfway, halfway through so that the front has as much time to um, get to that level uh, that the back does. Really great explaining. I'm curious though, if the initial heat in the back is what helps it get so full, and if the back, and if I rotate it, the front will still have a gap because it didn't have the initial heat. So that's something I'll update you guys on the newsletter if you're subscribed. Um, so I'll do another tester later on in this week and tell you if rotating helps. And then, also, just having that temperature gauge, um, putting in your thermometer, internal thermometer in here is really important or else I wouldn't have lowered my temperature and then I could have burned my macarons. So it's nice to double check, see what any type of oven that you're working at, what temperature it's riding at, riding. Okay, um, yeah, so that's that. This was the back. Let me get the front. This was the front. So no gap, small gap, same tray. Heat distribution is our main difference. And then it coming off of the mat like that, um, this part, it just wasn't baked all the way through, but 
um, doesn't do too much. You know how we saw it like pulling off of the mat? All of these ones that pulled off from the mat just kind of have a fragile foot. Can you see that or is it, the foot is a little fragile where it pulled off but not all the way around. So I'm hoping lowering the oven temperature a little bit will help that not happen. So. I, you know when you feel a macaron and they feel so heavy? I love that. There we go. Bottoms a little bit coming off the mat. I'll show you guys my mat too, and then we'll head off. We'll head up. And I'll try to fill it with something orange. Awesome. Are we good? I'm so excited, guys. Um, let's see. Lynn, is there any room to put a shield at the front door? I don't know. So see this one, I tried to pull it off when it was too hot. So I'm getting a little bit of these um, sticking. So I might need to bake a, like 12 minutes might be that happy, happy medium. But it's not making them fragile or anything. They're totally fine. But yeah. All right. Let's see that little, um, Uh, Saiba, thank you so much. Is that Saiba? Thank you. Very, you guys are being so generous. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it just, I just really like talking to people. Thank you for being here. Uh, I wanted to show what the one that I overworked. Terry, thank you so much. You guys, um, oh, look at that little fan. Thank you. You guys both gave me little fans. So this is the one I, I worked, overworked by scooping it back up and trying to pipe it. And there's a little gap in this, but not anything too different from the other ones. Just so I always like to see when my batter is a little bit more mixed, how it does um, relative to the other ones. But it has a little bit more, I feel like uh, a little fragile of top, but there, it's still pretty full. Um, thank you for your time. Oh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for, is it, now I'm Caroline, right? Now I have to go back and check it out. Uh, thank you. you. Are you a five star chef? The animation boy. I, I don't know what a five star chef is. I don't work in a Michelin star restaurant, if that's what you mean. I was trained. I'm classically trained, but, um, yeah. I would consider myself three stars out of three. I think we all are stars, shining stars. I'm gonna stop myself now because I'm just going bonkers, crazy like I do when I'm uncomfortable. Um, you guys are the best. We love talking to you. Thank you for being here, Macaron Maker. Thank you for subscribing. Really, really appreciate that, Caroline. And what's the time for you we are at 2 14 p.m and we are gonna head out i know how to make this is it eva or eva 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 i hope you try to make macarons because they are really fun but beware they are addicting thank you dora thank you guys much love everybody i hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and if you are subscribed to the newsletter, I will update you guys how rotating the pan worked and just kind of being more careful with my bake time when I'm not chatting it up with you guys. Even though that's the highlight of my day. Don't worry, I'm not gonna sing for any career. Okay guys, David, thank you for being here. Thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, see you in two weeks. Yes, they are addicted.